Hello, my name is Anne Kinvig. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Pacific Blue Cross and BC Life. Since 2007, Pacific Blue Cross has been honoured to call the CMHA our community partner. We'll hope you'll join us in celebrating those who've had the courage to speak out about this fundamental health issue. Like Senator Campbell, we at Pacific Blue Cross are committed to making a meaningful difference. Mental illness is an issue that affects us all. Let's make it okay for people from all communities to come forward and get the help they need. We hope you'll be inspired and encouraged by Senator Campbell's story and that you'll take a moment to show your support for the CMHA branch in your community. I know that together we can fight the stigma and break the silence that surrounds mental illness and addiction. Thank you for your support. I just want to say, Senator Campbell, we are just so honoured to be able to present you with the 2011 Mental Health Voices Award. And just as a, a bit of background, this award is its the sixth time it is being presented. We've presented it to broadcasters, to entertainers, to sports leaders, and now we're presenting it to one of Canada's best senators from our perspective. <laughs> so, well, well, I want to thank you for that. Uh, you know, the, the names, you know, Sheila, Rafe, and Matthew Good, and uh, you know, on and on. These are our people that are legendary in Canada, and it's, it's an honor uh, for me to even be considered, and uh, we can probably lose Senator and just call me Larry. Larry, when, when you think about people, when you think about mental illness and addictions, for all of the people that are listening to this DVD today are wondering, what can I do in my community? You know, what, what are some of those solutions? You know, I, I was, it took me a long time to figure it out, but, you know, if, if we could see mental illness or we could see addictions, if I could show it to you on an x-ray screen, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be having this discussion. Absolutely. We wouldn't be having this discussion, and I know uh, when I was a coroner, I'd, I'd, I would go and I would go to uh, a case, uh, a number of, not a number, but well, I'd say probably over 20 years, at least 10 uh, suicides from uh, schizophrenia. And I, I never knew what to say. I mean, I, was, I never knew what to say to the parents. And finally, I said, you know what? They, they were like, what do we say? What? You know, mm -hmm. what do we do? And I said, you just simply tell people that your son had an illness and it was terminal. I said, this is no different than any other illness. It could be terminal. It doesn't have to be terminal. It depends on treatment. It depends on the course of, of what happens. But th there should be no, you shouldn't have to be ashamed. But that of, is a fact, oh, right? It, it people is. people it, do feel shame. There's a, there's a stigma that has been going forever. Yes. Forever, and I, although I think that we're addressing it um, a little more rationally now, uh, there still is a stigma, and um, we got to get over that. We've got to, because as long as there's that stigma, there's the ability for people to weasel out of out of the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, it's way too broad. It's way too ranging. Uh, the continuum of of the disease is is way more than anybody expects, and so instead of doing that. What you should do is learn more about it. Schizophrenia, what is that? Bipolar, what is that? And uh, if we could start getting into that realm with mental illness, um, we would see a healthier population. Uh, we would see uh, less disorder on their streets. Right. Um, we would see what we were originally promised these people. Mm -hmm. That you have a mental illness, uh, we want to put you into the community and we will give you the care that you need. The care. That is the underlying piece. Yes. It's the care exactly. and the support that you need. It's me saying to you, you haven't changed. Right. Okay, you haven't changed as my friend. You have an illness. And like any illness, we're going to deal with this in, mm -hmm. in whatever manner it takes. But you're still my friend and nothing has changed. And, 
And that's what people have to know because along with that stigma for the family, there's a huge stigma for people who have mental illness to be able to confront it and say, I have, you know, there's something wrong. Something's going on here. I don't know what it is. It's essentially a fear, isn't it? It's a fear of not knowing. Yes. It's a fear of not being knowledgeable. And this is where uh, the Canadian Mental Health Association, this is where all kinds of groups that we see in the community who deal with, with the, I mean, you sort of are the umbrella, but there's all kinds of groups that are schizophrenia, bipolar, yes. Yes. eating disorder. There's all kinds of these groups out there that will give you help, that will give you knowledge, that will give you the strength to be able to say, gee, you know, this is a lot different than I imagined it would be, and there's something I can do about it. One of the, the core strategies that we, we share with people who are struggling with addictions or substance use problems is, is the whole idea of prevention, and that was one of the cornerstones of the four pillars yes. approach. Do you want to talk about prevention and early intervention? To do true prevention, you have to tell absolute truths. You, you can't fudge it. Uh, you can't say, uh, don't do this because it's bad. They'll go on the internet and find things that you know, say that will be totally contradictory. That's right. And so I think it's critical that parents get involved and, and know what's going on and understand all of the issues. I think it's also critical for teachers and parents to always be on the lookout for people who are struggling because it may be a sign of learning disorder. It could be any number of diseases, but it could also be a mental illness and caught and, and recognized early enough and with the proper interactions, um, de depending on what, what form of mental illness it is, um, it can be dealt with. Larry, there's much debate these days you know, about the role of the Senate in Canadian government. So I, what I'd like you to talk about is how has being a senator allowed you to forward these very issues that are very dear to you? I can address things like mental health. I can be, uh, I can be outspoken. I can address things, drug policy, uh, Aboriginal, uh, community issues, social housing, um, the things that are minefields for mm -hmm. a politician, that are just totally minefields. It also gives you a platform. I mean, I don't know what the difference is between Larry Campbell and Senator Larry Campbell. Right. But right. people perk up when they hear Senator for whatever reason that may be. Yes. I, I, yes. I personally don't know. <laughs> but it, it has allowed, I mean, I've, I've always been outspoken. I think that's a fair yes. statement. Yes. But it has allowed me to uh, marshal resources um, that allow me to try and make change, to, to try, to, to try and, and educate people on these issues. So Larry, what message do you have for the young people of British Columbia? Uh, my message to them is, you know, when things are rough, go talk to somebody. Go talk to somebody in healthcare, go talk to your teacher, go talk, mm -hmm. and don't quit. If you don't mm -hmm. think you got satisfaction from the first one, keep on going. Keep going. Keep going until your answer, your questions are answered to your satisfaction. And they will be eventually. What, what message do you have for the supporters that are listening to this today? My, my position on this is that Mental illness is uh, an issue that has not gotten the attention that it should, mm -hmm. uh, is very visible. Um, if there's a Canadian family that's untouched by it, I'd be very, very surprised. Me too. And if you go back and you think about uh, how, how the person was treated, hopefully it was a good, it was a, uh, they were treated well and the experience was good. Um, and you can thank organizations like the Canadian Mental Health Association for doing that. If it wasn't that good, then you should get involved and you should make sure that it doesn't happen to anybody else, that the experience is always good. And so I think while you're, while you're being bombarded with all of these incredible uh, opportunities to help, uh, leave room here for our, the people who I consider probably the most vulnerable in our health care in our, our health care system. Thank you so much, Larry. And thank, thank you, you, Senator Campbell. All right, thank you very much. It's it's been great talking it's to you. It's been great talking with you.